Good day everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making drawers for a young lady. Hello and welcome. Let's go ahead and get started on our next installment of the little girl's clothes. So we have the um, shift already done, we have stays already done, we're going to work on drawers. So um, it doesn't seem like in America women were wearing drawers, but I am seeing a lot of folk paintings from America where girls are definitely wearing drawers and they go down to their ankle. So we're going to go ahead and make some. It wasn't my original plan, but we're going to go ahead and do it uh, just because of that reason. So I am going to extend this pattern. I've made up a pattern based on little girls' measurements that I am making this outfit for. And um, I'm going to extend it to put some growth tucks in there. And for this pattern, I basically took the Work Woman's Guide and just dropped it to her measurements instead of the measurements the Work Woman's Guide called for. The Work Woman's Guide didn't give a size. It just said, like, first size, second size, third size. It didn't have any measurements, so I didn't know who was going to fit. I didn't feel like wasting time figuring that out. So I just took her length and, and um, hip width, and I was like, you know what? This is what we're doing. I do need to measure how, how much longer this is. Um, let's see, 20 to 26, so that's 6 inches longer, straighten out a little bit, okay, so if I want to do 3 tucks, we'll figure that out in a minute, I guess for ankles this isn't, because it would fit my ankle, it just looks narrow, probably because I'm not used to ankle leaf drawers, I'm used to like mid-calf drawers, they need to be bigger. That would make a lot more sense. Okay. So we're going to do a run and fill seam. It basically means just run this and then we'll, um, well, I'll show you. We'll cut part of it off, fold it under. Sorry, Leo's being a brat today. Yes, you are. And then we'll sew it again um, to kind of make it where it, it won't ravel. It's been so long since I made drawers. It's been at least five years, six years. Six years, maybe longer. I hate wearing them, so I don't make them. All right, let's see if this is long enough to make. Ooh, it is. Look at that. Let's make three inches wide. I'm gonna put that up. I'm gonna go ahead and run and fill this seam. As soon as I find my white thread, which is somewhere. But drawers should be pretty simple. So there really isn't a lot to do for drawers. It's just stitching up that, tucks, hem, I figure out what I'm doing here, um, I think we are just going to fold it over, because there's two ways you can do it, you either fold it over twice and stitch that down, or you can take this and bind it with a bias um, and do it that way, which is what I do on my own drawers. And the reason you would do it that way is because when the bias wears out, this is going to wear really fast because it's like rubbing against your thighs all day long. You just replace the bias and your drawers are still fine. However, if it does, if you did it this way and it wears, then I would just put bias over top of that. That's how I would solve it, personally. So it doesn't, I don't think it really matters. I'm just going to not cut bias and not have to deal with that. Sounds like a plan to me. All right. Let's figure out where I put all my uh, needles. Yeah, this will work for now. Anyway, after we do that part, then it's just um, gathering it, putting it to a waistband. So drawers are actually pretty easy to put together. Yeah, this is a very thick needle. We're gonna need to get a new needle. This is not gonna be fun. I don't know where all my needles went to. 
I can't find hardly anything today. It might be because my sewing room is an absolute disaster, but usually I'm pretty good about putting things in the right place, but couldn't find my camera, couldn't find my thread, can't find needles. I found the fabric cutting scissors though today. Last time those were missing. Alright, but that's a running stitch. It's not a very nice running stitch. We're going to go get a new needle and try that again. But, that's a running stitch. I'm going to do that. I'll come back when I'm ready to fill and um, do the little tucky bits. Alright, so, I ran and fell the seams. I'm working on the finishing parts of the felling. Yeah, I did the tufts already too, just because they're basically just filled. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. So they were we ran them and then now we're just tuck that raw edge under. So you have a nice pretty edge. And uh, I think when we cut it out we I was concerned about how narrow the leg was. I did add I guess it. So it's shaped more like this now, which is a perfectly acceptable shape, which just has weird gores in it now. Which, I mean, when you cut things too small. My other option was, of course, to cut the whole leg off here and cut a whole new pant leg. But this wasted less fabric. Either way, there was going to be a weird seam. Unless I wanted to recut the entire pair of drawers, which I did not want to do. So there's that. Um, I'm going to show you kind of what I did with the tux because we're going to hem the pant leg. It's basically the exact same stitch. So yeah, the drawers did take a little bit longer than I expected. I expected to get these done in one day. But because I stitched them up, sat around staring at them for like 30 minutes, and then decided, yeah, they have to be wider. <laughs> then had to cut out a piece and sew it. And for some reason, I didn't cut it into one piece. I cut it into two pieces. And so I had to do like three extra seams after taking the original one out. Yeah, that wasn't the wisest decision I've ever made, but they're fixed now. They're functioning now, at least. I mean, I guess that's all we can ask for. And this just furthers my mantra on I hate drawers. them. I hate to wear them. <laughs> I hate ironing them too. Like every time I wear mine I have to iron them. Don't like that either. I understand their purpose and I understand why women started wearing them. But I mean we were doing so well centuries and centuries of not wearing anything like this. And then we decide oh yeah you know what we need? An underpant type garment. That's what women need. And now we got to do the top part um, where we fold it down, where we fold it, you know, where we fold down the raw edge at the top and um, stitch that down. Okay, I did that one. I did that one. This side we need to finish, and it could. And again, I could have done bias. Um, however, this is less fabric. And when it does wear, I can always add fabric. All right. Now I have two pant legs. And this is the front of this one. And this one's inside out. be the front of this one. Oh good, I made a right and a left leg. I was kind of concerned about that. I was terribly concerned I would have fixed it. I would have checked beforehand, but you know. Alright, one, two, three, four, five. Let's do five inches of overlap. That sounds nice. I'm going to overlap them like this. Actually, should it be less since she's so small? And we'll go with this. That one I overlapped mine. 
but we're going to gather it in a second so it will be smaller okay next step is we need to sew a gathering thread all the way across the drawer so now they're though well, they're not attached they're pinned together they will be attached in a moment and we're going to do a one long gathering thread at which point we'll just put it to a waistband and be done although one thing we do need to do because Little girls don't usually have hips, and so that makes putting drawers on and putting petticoats on extremely difficult. So what was done is that they would put a button hole in the drawers and a button in the petticoats and buttons on the stays, and you would just button your drawers and petticoats to the stays. So we are going to do that in this video as well. So waistband and then all the buttons and button dang buttonholes. There's going to be several of them. Well, better get working on it then, I suppose. All right, I have gathering. I have gathered the drawers. I have them into a waistband. I'm just going to use the extra gathering thread, and we're going to do a back stitch. I'm going to just do right on that uh, line that I did the gathering threads on. I only do one gathering thread because I'm lazy and I don't like doing more than one. But I got some projects to do because I need to. There's several things I need to get done in a very short period of time for this project because I think our film shoot is a week from, well, it's like a week and a half now and I still have, you know, of course, petticoats and a dress to do I don't think I'm going to worry about headwear I might figure out how to do her hair though which I've done before, so I just need to Go back and check my 1830s references for kids her age. Truly, the buttonholes are going to take the longest time. I'm going to do two buttons on the drawers themselves. And of course, two buttonholes. And I'm, well, four buttonholes. Two buttons. Four buttonholes. So I also need the buttonholes that are going to attach to the stays. And I'll do two buttons on the stays. Because that's what I'm seeing on the originals. I'll be at earlier originals, but still originals. So that's what we're going to strive for here. Alright, I never show you how I'm doing buttonholes. I hate them so much. But they're starting to look more like originals now. They just, I still hate them. So this is one of the ones that's going to attach to the stays. The drawers, those are done. Um, let's see. Putting on the buttons for the stays. Because you do need to button the drawers to the stays. Here's my needle. And we're kind of making our own little shank button because I don't want the button to be very flush against the fabric. I want there to be space. So you can see there's there's space in there. And the reason I did that because I am trying to put a pair of drawers and two petticoats on the single button. And so if it was flat against the fabric, there wouldn't be space for all that extra bulk there. Whereas if I left a little bit of a space, it might be able to accommodate what I needed to accommodate. So let me show you how I did that. Button, and I put it where it belongs. I put that down. And I kind of just lifted up the button to where I felt like it needed to be. A little much. Like right there is good. Make it a little bit bigger. Because it's always better to make the hole a little bit you know, bigger than you need than not the hole, but the, the excess. So basically, I'm just going to keep doing my button. Is that a little too far over? Not ever pulling the thread flush. Kind of leaving that little space. Oops. 
looks like if I put it down, you can kind of see where all the extra thread is. I think we might do one more, and then we'll do the next step. Okay. Alright, so there's that. Now I'm going to go onto the front side. Oops, there we go. And I'm going to take my thread around and basically do a buttonhole stitch. And this is just strengthening. Oops, that didn't work. And I tilt this button up my thread. There we go. So what this is doing is putting all that thread together. Um, and making it basically like a shank. So like shank buttons aren't flush against the fabric. They have that little metal loop that you sew onto the fabric. This is basically the equivalent of a metal uh, loop. Just do that a couple times. That's also going to help my help it stay up instead of just flattening to where all that extra thread comes up. That's what that's for. All right, and that's basically how we're sewing on the buttons. I'm only doing two, so that's basically I had done one of them already. So that's it. Okay, there's a knot there, and we're just going to hide that, pretend it didn't happen. Alright. See how this works. So there's that. So I'm going to put those on. Eat there, my little. And you attach this with these. There's really four put buttons to put the drawers on. There we go. And so that's basically what they look like. So when they're on the little girl, of course, her wearing it is going to make it stay up. But those are drawers. Now I also could have, and there are patterns in the workman's guide, of basically making a little bodice and then making the drawers. And I kept looking at that going, oh, that's a really cool thing. And then I sat there and was like, well, how does the child go to the restroom? And there has to be a trick, but reading the workwoman's guide, I can't figure it out. But it looks to me like you'd have to get the child down to their shift for them to go to the bathroom. And I mean, a 10-year-old could handle that. A three-year-old... Some three-year-olds don't tell you till it's an emergency. So the button trick is usually the best one. And usually children's drawers aren't split crotch. This young lady's is because she's old enough to, for the most part, to be modest, you know, more or less like an adult. Um, but most children's drawers are closed drawers. And so I'm looking at that going, so you'd have to take the dress off and the petticoats, basically, if you had a if you had bodice drawers. And I just couldn't see the point in that. Unless there was buttons along the crotch where you could just unbutton the crotch and go to the restroom. That would be the only solution I can process. But I don't know. Maybe that's something, that is definitely something more to look into. But if you have the answer to that, I would love to know. <laughs> but um, in most reproductions, I've seen just drawers that button onto the stays. So that's what we're doing. And that makes the most logical sense to me. So that's what we've done here. Anyway, that's basically our little girl's drawers. I mean, little pantalettes. Look at her little tucks. And it's starting to really come together. I mean, it's just petticoats and dress now. And petticoats are easy, easy, easy. I mean, you can get one of those done real fast because it's just straight rectangles, hemming it, waistband. None of little fiddly fitting bits. And there's plenty of space here. Yeah, I can definitely add at least one petticoat on top of that, but I could probably squeeze two in there. It'd be fine. It'd be great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today as we made our drawers for a young lady. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here on Monday.